We'll start with the second part of the session of LACNAG. If you come in late, we are going to flog you at 6 p.m. Yes. Tiago Setti, Network Engineering Director of Edge Uno, and he is going to present a protocol, internet protocol, 800 giga terabit. So let's receive some, let's receive Tiago. So I'm going to give a more technical presentation. It's more uh, for the uh, uh, tier one. So let's talk about uh, the uh, Ethernet capacity. This is the protocol that was uh, that's uh, being used uh, all over the world, and today it's uh, used as the main interface for data communication. Let's talk about what comes after 400 gigas. That's a standard up to 800, and then we have the terabit or further. Here you have a spoiler. Um, if somebody asks what's coming after 800 gigas, well, here, this is the spoiler, 1.6 terabits. That, so, and that's a standardization of Ethernet. Um, so this is a chart showing uh, the Ethernet uh, standardization. This is the agency, the EEE, uh, triple E, that standardized Ethernet, showing the, st the standards that are already known by industry from 10 megas to 400 gigas and in yellow what's in the pipeline what is still underway and this is not a standard what may the future bring it may be something different but this is at least what's in the pipeline something interesting in this chart is to see the traditional course uh, of uh, the uh, hops uh, from uh, uh, 10 to 100, from 100 uh, to uh, 1 giga, from 1 giga to 10, but this slowed down. Now we have uh, hops uh, from uh, 100 to 400. That is four times, and from 400 it might be twice, from 400 to 800, and we're going to try to reach 1.6 teras, that would be four times 400 gigas. It would be very difficult for us to see a leap uh, of uh, 10 times, as we did in the past. This is some information about the market. Um, this uh, is uh, data from light counting. Uh, here we have uh, the, uh, um, this is 2023. And we have the capacities and the optic modules. 800 giga is not yet a standard. There are some vendors in the market that are introducing modules that are not yet in this uh, here, but they're already 800 giga. They're not, not the standard yet. There's a dominance of 100 gigas and uh, 10 gigas. Uh, well, but uh, the dark blue, uh, 40 gigas is disappearing in dark blue, uh, dark green. And from uh, next year on, you'll never see anything with 40 gigas. So what we see is that 100 gigas, 10 gigas, um, 400 gigas, these are the main standards, 40 uh, uh, gigas is uh, being phased out, and now we see in 2025 20, we'll have 800 and 1.6 starting in 2025 or 2026. Let's remember some concepts of the 400 gigas. We are going to see more technical issues that are used uh, also in the 800 gigas. 400 giga internet, Ethernet has some characteristics adopted in the internet protocol that are going to be used in the next generation. We have different standards, some changes. We now have multi standards. It's no longer I3 uh, triple E up to, um, but not because now things are changing with 400 gigas with uh, other standardization agencies or companies such as IEF and OIF and 100 giga lambda that define other complementary standards. 
We have all these have been defined by IEEE, and then we have 400 ZR and other advanced technologies that are advanced by other standardization bodies. This is a 400 giga uh, standard that is repeated in the 800 gigas. The agencies work in parallel, each one in its niche, to standardize these new technologies as fast as possible. Another important change is the type of modulation. We went from a more advanced modulation. We no longer use the traditional RZ, NRZ, the on-off, the zero one, the traditional one. We now have a four uh, with a, the, an amplitude that provides a greater capacity for bit transfer, to two bits per symbol. And now we have a new challenge that is a higher modulation that turns it more prone to interference and to errors, and the distances are reduced. So we need to uh, solve those challenges using new technologies. Another technology that uh, already appeared uh, started in 40 gigas. We no longer have serial interfaces. And starting in uh, 40 gigas, we use uh, four 10 giga channels in, a, in an interface to reach 40. 400, with 400 gigas, it's the same. So we adopt them in parallel. We have the R8 model in the first line with all the channels, LR8, eight channels, and it reaches 400 gigas. Electronics, Moving forward, we have modulators that do 400 gigas per channel, and we managed to put four uh, 100 channel, uh, giga channels to get to 400 gigas. And those channels may have different uh, wavelengths, but they can also be fibers. When you're at the data center with 100 meter, 200 meter connections, there's no need for you to use uh, WDM. We we can use multiple fiber cords. This is a characteristic that starts with 40 gigas, uh, 100 gigas, and 400 gigas, and it's also been adopted to be used with 800 gigas and 1.6 teras. Another advantage of the 400 gigas is that we start to have 100 uh, giga channels that are serial, independent from each other. And so this leads me back to a standard of 100 gigas with a LR4, four channels of uh, 25. So, and in 400 gigas, you, you have four 100 giga channels. And if I take one channel, I'll have a serial channel. Um, uh, and one, for instance, that will vary based on the distance. So I'm saving in uh, the manufacturing. I'm no longer using four lasers. I start using only one laser with a gearbox. So this helps me. This uh, increases savings. I'm spending a bit more in the gearbox, but um, I have a, I'm saving in the the laser because I have just one. And this has been evolving with demand. Now we've increased the scale until. And uh, here we have breakout situations. What is the breakout? Is taking a 400 giga interface, opening it in four 100 giga interfaces. This already happened in uh, 40. We opened in four of 10, and it will also happen in 800 giga. Um, so we. Um, uh, DR4, we can uh, connect uh, four clients of 100, of course. Each 100 uh, giga client is using a single Lambda interface, one single 100 giga channel. So it's not compatible with the current standards that uh, with the traditional things. Uh, the four, these are uh, LR4, uh, they are four channels. 
400 gigas we're using in uh, modulation of one ch channel. So we need to change it to be able to operate with 400. We know that breakout is something that the data center engineers don't like very much because it means another machine. It's another place where there can be flaws uh, that can fail. You have to open it, but it's unavoidable because if we want to reach the density that we need in today's uh, machines in a single rack, we put two 400 giga interfaces. We break them into four and we get to 128 ports. Physically, it would be impossible to put uh, 28 ports in a single rack. So you have uh, the, the cable breakout comes to help us. There's no escape. This is an important characteristic for us to understand and to adopt the new standard. As, and we've seen that we, and we've adopted that ever since 40 gigas. Now, as to the physical format, some, something that's worth remembering, the protocol that uh, runs there is not standardized by the same company, so consortia. Mm, uh, based on the physical format, this is a consortium of uh, companies and uh, the internet standard is the protocol itself today. In the market, there are two key standards that have been adopted. That is the QSFPDD and OSFP. So it makes sense to find that there's competition uh, between the two standards to see which will uh, be uh, accepted from VHS, Betamax, uh, DVD, um, the different technologies in the XFSP. There are standards that appear in the market and compete. Today, we have a de facto standard that is the QSFPDD that is much more popular than OSFP. Still, we have some vendors that invest on OSFP, but it makes sense to see a migration toward QSFPDD. And let me show you what's coming later with 800 gigas. Another important uh, factor of 400 gigas, the standardization of the interfaces. We always work with gray interfaces in the data centers, and now we start to have DWDM, um, the long scope. They don't lose scale, they don't lose density. Uh, a machine with 32 physical ports. <clears throat> now we can put, we can go from 32 LL ports to 32 LR. They're already standardized in other by other other agencies. In addition of IEEE, there are parallel standards that bring long scope characteristics in the interface. Here you see different vendors. We have the FPDD module that helps us increase the gain in constant density. The 400ZR has a presentation. Well, two years ago, I gave a presentation about this. These slides barely summarize those technologies. It's, they're quite um, uh, state of the art, they're costly, but they give you a, a 40 kilometer scope and with no amplification and eight, uh, uh, hundred, uh, up to 120 kilometers with amplification. There are other technologies. W, WDM, DWDM brings a FEC with a larger header, 14.8%, and we have a transponder in an SFP module. So, and let's see now what is the difference with the ZR plus. This is a market evolution to increase the capacity, to increase the scope. It's a different FEC. It's no longer a standard FEC. There may uh, be some standards and the vendors may combine the different, uh, the same model, but they are no longer following the OIF uh, standard, so they have a, lot, a greater scope. 
And thanks to that, we have smaller modulations that allow us not just to work with 400 gigas, but 300 gigas at 300 kilometers, for instance. So it needs to be more flexible. So that is why OpenZR Plus brings this with quite a low consumption, around 18 watts. Now, let's talk of 800 giga and 1.6 terabytes. Let's see what's uh, coming in the future. The main standard that is being considered in industry is 800 giga. And then we have 1.6, that's an uh, ongoing debate. Because they are they're trying to, be, to standardize them together, the only working group is uh, uh, working on those at the same time, 800 giga and 1.6 terabytes. So let's look at 800 giga first. We continue to use the same uh, parallelism, eight channels, and we as we already have modems of uh, 100 gigas with serial channels, so it's quite simple to put eight 100 giga channels, and we reach 800. This, this sketch shows the module of 400 giga to the right uh, and uh, uh, 400 and uh, 800. So instead of using 50 giga in serials, we use uh, four uh, 100. Um, this, there are eight devices transmitting light and uh, eight receptors, but we have the possibility of reaching 800 giga. This is the first model, the first adoption in the market, because precisely this is what we have available from an electronic point of view the modules, the chips, the cards, so we can increase the speed and adopt this standard. And even before we do the standardization, from the physical point of view, there are some parallel debates. We have this QSFPDD that will support 800 giga, but it's been what the one that has been more accepted by um, industry is QSFP DD 800, not just QSFP. The advantage of QSFP DD is that it is compatible with the rest of the QSFP. If we have a device with a port that is QSFP, DD 800, it will have the support of all these, even the 40 giga that it is a tradition. So the network operator, the data center operator can make it grow, can grow, and may have a more controlled evolution instead of having to change all the equipment and all the modules. It may acquire uh, an equipment that may be QSF PDD and will use the models as are uh, required uh, to do it more gradually, reducing the cost of uh, purchasing this for uh, the network operators and the data center operators. So QSFPDD800 follows um, uh, the other one. It's uh, the standard that is most adapted, adopted in the industry. Today, we have the 800 Now, let's talk about standardization. We have a working group that is um, the uh, uh, P802-3DFD-DJ, uh, and the other one uh, encompasses other characteristics of uh, 100 giga and 200 giga that change today's work, but the focus is in the uh, interfaces of 800 giga and 1.6 tera. This working group started uh, a meeting last year, and it's estimated to end by the end of next year. The norms and standards are still being debated, and there are things that can be changed. We know that some vendors are bringing uh, machines with 800 giga interfaces, but there's a risk to get a solution that is not meeting the guidelines. Because if the guidelines, if the norms are changed in two years' time, you may have some equipment or some interface that do not comply with the norms, and you might have to invest again to change the machine. Do you know that there are big telecom operators or data based data centers that have to change the equipment because they need to change the interfaces because of their demand. 
One of the agencies that um, discuss this is uh, the Ethernet Technology Consortium, ETC, it's, that was called 20 Giga ETC. It was created to standardize the 25 Giga. Now it's been changed. And now it's called just the Ethernet Technology Consortium to make it more general because of the impatience of the market and the need to have the interface available for the production and usage. That is why, in a way, they did things fast, trying to generate a standardization. Now with 800 giga and basically the thing is reusing the 400 giga launching the first 800 giga standard there are two 400 uh, um, uh, interfaces uh, there's no it's not one of 800 but it's two of 400 in one single model to reach a better scale and better density but even like that their logic case of uh, 800 giga in an 800 giga uh, standard. And there are already machines that have a capacity for that. Uh, for instance, 32 ports of, uh, um, in, in just one single rack, of course, that uh, there will be the possibility to open it in eight of 100 or four of 100, uh, because we'll be able to have more than 800 ports in a single rack. That's a huge scale, but in some data centers, it's a volume that's already uh, quite frequent. And of course, this is uh, following ZR, the long distance, uh, um, comparing this long distance uh, technology with the transponder in the module. This became was uh, standardized by OIF, and now there is a working group to have one out of 400 giga, and actually we call it 400 ZR. This is an evolution. Uh, they still use a modulation 16 QAM. Uh, the capacity is 108 uh, G volt, and uh, it uh, still has the same scope uh, that is for uh, data centers with 40 kilometers of ampl amplification with, with and without uh, uh, amplification. That is the usual thing for data centers, and we have a larger grid for this channel, but all that without losing density and scale. Now let's talk about 1.6. 1.6 is still an idea being analyzed. There's nothing ready, nothing in the pipeline. People are just debating it. I might tell you something now, and next year it might change. So it's still being studied, and the evolution and the technology is evolving. But the idea will is to start uh, um, uh, using eight. Uh, 200 gigas to increase uh, the capacity of a modulation today. Instead of using 100 gigas, we can use 200, and with the same eight channels, we can reach 1.6. The uh, aim here is to have a breakout of 2 of 800, 4 of 400, or 16 of 100. The idea is to reach with 4 of 400. That makes sense if we want to adopt the standard 400 giga that's quite popular in the market. The image here gives you an idea of some things that can change. To the left, you can see a more traditional model where we have a slot in the switch where you can put a module that uh, can be added. It's pluggable in a way. Then we have the optic model that it is inside the machine, and then in the porter, we'll have the optic connector. So if we, so you can work with the models apart that we call that model the onboard uptake. And the idea is to incorporate the technology inside the machine. So in this last line, we see the uh, traditional, the pluggable optic. So we have the switch that's separate and uh, a switch package on the model that can be connected is connected externally. Then we have onboard optics that has uh, the uh, pluggable optics technology is incorporated in the uh, um, board itself it is in the same area of electronic. And then the last layer of energy efficiency is incorporating the uh, uh, optic component in the same silica component that, con that controls the uh, switch router. So these are ways that have been studied quite a lot to add more capacity and to make it possible to grow without reaching 
the uh, limit of energy efficiency so as to have a multiplied capacity. Well, so thank you. I have uh, two more minutes. So now I can answer questions that you may have. This can be by the uh, via Zoom or here in person. Hello? Fernando Frisciani. Hello. Well, I think that we found the solution of to the fair share issue, right? Well, jokes aside, in recent years, we've seen an exponential growth of traffic with a greater 4K con content, 8K. And in the meantime, we're receiving the technology of 800 giga, 1.6 tera, and apparently they're trying to follow the pace. Now, I wanted to understand what do you think about it, because do you think that the traffic will continue to grow as it's done so far, and that we might have contents with more resolution, like 16K, for instance, or do you consider that this will remain steady and the 800 giga and 1.6 tera technology will come and maintain and balancing and making the bit transportation uh, cheaper. What do you think about it? What will happen in future years, considering the growth of traffic and the availability of this technology to save in a bit transport? Well, I my view has changed as time has gone by. It's already happened that I, I used to think that this evolution would be would stop, but it doesn't. Technology moves forward all the time, and the broadband con consumption continues to grow. We'll see the geography presentation showing the cost of uh, bandwidth as it fell. And what is that due to the market, of course, but what is the main attribute of the cost of bits? It's technology, precisely. So those dollars that uh, would allow us to give a, uh, to buy one giga, uh, for instance, in the past with $1,000, we bought one giga and uh, now 100 and maybe tomorrow 400 or so. The traffic will continue to grow. And I think that Mark, Mike mentioned something or somebody mentioned it in a comment maybe. And I'm going to try to link to that comment. If we don't need content, well, we would need bandwidth and we continue with dial internet. So when technology makes it possible to have more capacity, then things develop. It's very, it would, it's, it's not usual when there's more demand and technology wants to keep up. It's usually the other way around. Technology always goes faster. There's always some enlightened guy that uh, makes up something, and then people give use. It could be 3D. Uh, or new solutions like Netflix or Pokemon or whatever that will drive people crazy, requiring bandwidth all over. We don't know, but we'll consume technology and then demand will follow. I hope I answered your question. Douglas, yes? Oh, how are you? Okay, well. I saw a similar presentation last year, and I still, I'm still surprised with this idea of the optic component inside the equipment because I'm, I'm surprised and I want to know how that will work now that this part of generating power is, has already been incorporated. How are we going to work with it? Because we have an environment with two or three rack units, and we are going. Are we going to disconnect something out? Um, but how are we going to do it? Because I think that it would be quite complex. Could you tell us how it will work? Well, yes. Uh, your question is asked every week by the standardization agencies. Uh, because we are used to such a flexible optic model that is so simple that going to the old model, we had direct interfaces in the machine. It's like the old uh, with uh, 84 TP uh, ports, uh, one would burn, and uh, that you could, that was all. So if uh, 
there was uh, if one of the ports uh, would burn then we would uh, put a label there and uh, we gradually went uh, run out of ports but i think that some market players are there's pressure by the vendors of these modules connectable models they are struggling because you don't need to include this in the, uh, the machine because that, that that can evolve too so it won't be necessary to put these components and to have the same flexibility. In that regard, there's a dispute about the uh, cons uh, uh, consumption of uh, energy because heat is one of uh, the constraints. And I also wanted, my, my apologies, Thomas, this is my last comment. Is there, um, I think that it is more difficult, at least in my experience, it's been like that, so I have the doubt, is it that that won't happen in a different machine after the switch? Well, it's something that we'll have to evaluate. I am more prone to think that these connectable, the pluggable uh, components have more possibilities for the future. Thank you. Good afternoon.